Hey guys, Jack here at Cowbell Farms, and I would like to show you the starts of my medical herb garden that I will be selling in kits. These are just a few of them. This is catnip, yarrow. Oh, this is chocolate mint, which is lovely. Elderberry. We will also have oregano and several more herbs. Chamomile, which are over here. These are all chamomile babies. Some more yarrow. My yarrow does great here. This is one of my yarrow plants coming up and taking over. And this thing gets quite large, like up to three feet tall sometimes. I have some Black Eyed Susan over here in the corner. And these are my strawberry beds. I'll let you take a look at those. I have those on the outside because I didn't have room. On the inside, the runners get all in the gravel, but I have four beds of strawberries here and two on the other side. I have some rosemary plugged into my corners here. There's another big yarrow. I love the yarrow because it pulls in so many pollinators, like the butterflies come in. This whole bed right here usually has Tulsi in it, which is holy basil. Once it seeds, it's like, takes over the entire bed and the grass and the gravel and I've even found it that tree right here there's a water spigot on the other side and I have literally found Tulsi growing all the way over on that side of the yard just from birds or from the wind blowing all the seeds there but guys look at these blooms on the strawberries Oh, they're so beautiful. And these two strawberry beds right here don't have as many strawberries as my other ones do. These two, the runners, and they just took over. There were two different varieties of strawberries. And the ones that are actually doing are the sequoia. These are ever sweet on this side that didn't put out as many babies or runners. There's Roscoe. These are sequoia, and they took over beds, and I have actually been digging them up on the inside here and putting them in pots so that I can rehome them. We have a radish growing right here. Just rogue things, rogue plants. I have a whole bunch more chocolate mint growing right here, and it is spreading into the inside, which I don't mind. I actually don't mind my mint spreading. Um, it doesn't bother me one bit. There's a little baby radish from the seeds from that fell on the ground from last year. I love rogue plants. They make my day. This is one of my outside gardens. This is where I grow my tomatoes. I grow one stem plants here. They go up on a string and latch onto these. And then I just wrap them as they grow. And I think this gives me room in this bed is a 20 foot, almost 20 foot bed. Um, I can get 22 tomatoes in this one bed because of this method. And I have two of these, so I can get 44 tomatoes in this 20 by four foot or three and a half foot by 20 foot area and this one so there's two beds so i can get 40 around 44 tomato plants in here which is awesome for saving space these are all wildflowers out back here this is hyssop it has a very licorice -y smell to it i'll go ahead and get this weed out from beside it might as well while i'm there but that is anise, anise hyssop or anise hyssop. I also have, I think these are Black Eyed Susans that are growing from them reseeding from last year. And these things are like everywhere, everywhere. 
I mean, look at the amount. I need to take this plastic down off my wall, but behind here, I have a beautiful greenhouse effect with some beautiful, let me pull this back. Look how green my clematis is back there being protected from, <laughs> it was so shielded. Well, there's some more yarrow right here, just seeded out here. I had um, some plants out here that were in this area that I have to see if they come back this year. Um, they got shielded a lot last year. I had a Mexican sunflower that grew um, top past this and took up this whole entire space right here. There's some more yarrow. I like just the wildness of this flowers. Um, that is columbine coming up right here. This is um, pineapple sage. It comes back. You have to cut it back to the bottom. I had sunflowers and everything planted all in here. There's black eyed Susans coming up. There is tarragon right here. I really love the Mexican tarragon more than this. And then there's definitely, I love Creeping Jenny. Like I love just to plug it in places because it just does wonderfully. I also have over here, shielded some beautiful rose cutting from vining roses that actually tower like this right here. This is one that I've had. I have to cut this thing back so much, but it is so big and bushy, but it's beautiful. I would like to wrap it around a little bit, but you know, I'm one person. Here's my other strawberry beds. And I actually have no idea. I forgot what. This is a different one. I think it's... Uh, it's an Everbearing. I think... I think I mostly have air Everbearing because I like the times of the month where they come in. Like this just goes and will have fruit on it from about May or June all the way. I was getting strawberries out of this bed right here in November. I was still getting strawberries, so that was good. This is a flower bed full of turnip greens, I think. I had a box of seeds that were like 10 years old, and I just dumped them out here. So if anyone says seeds don't last, um, I'm pretty sure this is proof that 10 years later, they still grow at a pretty good rate also. I got me a beautiful Queen Anne's lace jammed back here in this. Let's walk out here. This is one of my tomato beds. I plant cherry tomatoes on these and just, I don't really prune them. I prune them from the bottom to the wire and then I just let them go and Put them on there but i have two entire rows of the cherry tomato area and then in here i have this is raised up about i would say almost two feet high and then i have these cattle panels up here and last year i planted tomatoes here's my little signs that i have i got signs so that i would remember what they were and those little stakes in the ground disappear this is a rose hedge that I planted to just kind of close in my garden space. So it doesn't always have to be fences and things like that. Like this is literally just a hedgerow of roses around the edge. And last year I had peppers planted on this short trellis. I just had my peppers in the ground and had, I cannot remember how many varieties right here, but I did sweet peppers on this side of the garden and then I did hot peppers on the other side of the garden. And I know that like eight months ago, not really eight months ago, but I started this project of putting in this for my beans and have not finished it because this is supposed to have two of these on it. But, you know, time and money and 
you run out of like both sometimes. I've got to get out here and I would like to put landscaping fabric down, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that this year. So I may just get in here and cut this really well and mulch it with maybe some straw even. And this is a goji berry. It's been struggling. I've seen so many people have these and they were like supposedly grow so well and so fast, but I think this one's three years old and it's still pretty tiny. Pretty tiny. And the one over in the bed, the first one is a goji berry from on the other side, that little plant that I didn't mention at the beginning. This is a poplar tree that I'm gonna plant here because I just want to have a little bit of blocking. It's not really gonna block the sun that much because we have such a broad space of sky. Like there's nothing here. So even until the sun goes down behind those trees, which is really late, we don't really have a lot of shade over here. So I'm hoping to shade a little bit. I know it won't be this year that that tree grows, but maybe in the future. And I wanna put some shade cloth over those tomatoes back here, stretch it over the top of that. And then from the corners of these poles at the raised bed garden. I want to stretch out some shade cloth over here that I can use. So I'll have to do several sections of shade cloth, but I bought these little things that clip onto them and slide down a wire. So we'll see how they work this year. They're all the puppies helping me. This is Roscoe, as y'all have met. Say hey, Jug. That's Jughead, Juggy. This is Willow, my oldest girl. Hey, Willow. Can you say hey? You wanna say hey? Hey, girl. Hey, girl. That's Frankie. He's a punk. He's actually the most Eeyore-style dog you have ever met in your entire life. This is spearmint that's growing all over here. And on each side of my front entrance, I have these weeping cherry trees. And this is an arch with climbing roses on it and ladybanks roses. So I've got two different types of roses on this entryway. I'll back up so you can actually see the entryway to the garden. This is my entrance to the garden. I didn't intend on this being a full garden tour, but I guess that's what we'll have. This is the orchard. I mean, the vineyard. <laughs> These are my muscadines, scopadines. And I have 20 plants. And they're fairly new. They're only, uh, they're only, this is the third summer they've been here. I planted them in the fall. So this is two and a half years of these guys. Some of them have had some hard times because puppies have rolled in and took them out. This one had to start all over at the bottom this year. So we'll see how it does. So technically I guess I have 19 <laughs> without this little guy. These are the elderberry bushes and there's two huge ones right here babies everywhere we have babies that i planted here and here and then there's two big ones at this end and i hope to fill in this entire space with elderberries just because but i have to put these little markers out these don't put as many babies out this one has more babies but I have to stick stakes out here because my husband's definitely a just run them over with a lawnmower kind of guy. This is Falcatraz, the prison for chickens. And I hear a little goat over there. I just planted roses, climbing roses, all the way down this fence to just intertwine through here. These are my henny girls. Roger the rooster out there. He's a French copper moron. And the rest of these girls are 
fridge copper marons, olive eggers, Easter eggers. I got some true whiting, blue eggers, and a few other varieties. Those are golden comet, I think. I have a couple of barred rocks. I had a problem last year with the foxes. I had 90 chickens at one time. I had hatched eggs last year and had, I think 60 or 70, no, about 70 babies. And as they grew, by the end of the year last year, I ended up with about 36 chickens and I think I got rid of the fox and I still have 35 chickens. So apparently I did something, but that was a huge loss. Like I wasn't really paying attention um, to him getting in there until I was out cutting the grass one day and he literally just came up and was sitting right here while I was cutting the grass right here. And he was just chasing chickens right there, like less than 10 feet away from me. Not scared at all. And when he, when I ran him off, that is a fence right here between them that has goat and sheep wire, which is a two inch hole. The fox jumped up and went through a two inch hole. And I didn't see her after that or him after that. So I think it might've just hurt the fox really, really bad. Or it might've died from trying to squeeze through that hole and messing its body up. But here's my little coop that I built a couple of years ago. I have plastic on the inside right now because in the winter, I really like to keep them from getting too cold. So we wrapped it in plastic. This is the barn. There's a couple more puppies over here. That's the Aussies. The Aussies are wonderful. They're also crazy and they love to catch rabbits squirrels that's the leftovers of a rabbit sorry that y'all had to see that but i like that they can fend for themselves i don't mind them catching squirrels and rabbits and eating them it's really good for them to do that and as much as bunnies are cute they do tear up your garden so i would rather have people catching them hey guys meet the girls that's bernadette Lucy, Petunia, Fern, and that little boy. Don't know his name. He didn't have one yet. Thelma, Edna, Ellie. And we're about to put another fence up through here. And as we walk through here, these are walnut trees, black walnut trees. And they make a mess a mess like there are so many walnuts on the ground i need to start harvesting them but i still haven't really found the best method to getting them cracked open and everything but here's my little orchard i have apple trees back here i have some plum trees this is a i think a santa rosa plum I had a plum tree die that was beside this one, so I need to get another plum tree. These two trees are fairly new. I got them last summer. No, I take that back. I got them um, last fall before last and planted these. And these are two Granny Smith. They're probably not Granny Smith. They're horse apples, sorry. I like horse apples. They're the really tangy ones. And I also planted comfrey around the bases of the trees because this helps. The tap roots on comfrey go so deep. Don't, it's not for the faint of heart. And I did not do the blocking comfrey or whatever that doesn't reseed. I don't really care if it reseeds. I don't care if it's all over here. I will feed it to my plants. It can take over this whole area. I don't care. But the tap roots on the comfrey go so deep that they pull nutrients up to shallower ground for the fruit trees to actually produce more vitamins and minerals and things like that. Plus this will spread out around it and pretty much act as a compost. You can just chop and drop, mulch the trees and all that nutrients will be right there at the base of your trees. 
I'm not your typical person who cares about stuff spreading. I will cut it with a lawnmower and I'm not too concerned about it. These two trees right here are pear trees. And I think I've had one pear on that tree in the seven years that it's been here. These are blueberries. I have a little blueberry patch right here. And they're coming into bloom really, really well. That's a good amount of blossoms on this little bush. And I have a variety of types of blueberries out here because you need a good variety for good pollination. This is one of my better bushes, um, but this bush has been here for over 20 years. Oh, look, bees. Pretty. I have a fig tree here. And then these are thornless blackberries. These guys are great at growing, but they do not produce that much fruit. They produce a little fruit, but I haven't had as much fruit off of these thornless ones as I have on these with the thorns. These ones with the thorns, I'll show you this spring, summer, when they start getting fruit, because these fruit all year long, and it's wonderful, but they get these massive blackberries that are like, that big around they're huge and i got the runners from these from a neighbor so i got to get out here and trim because i've got a lot of dead that i got to cut out of here and get rid of and clean all this grass out of here i did come out and mulch with leaves these are my raspberries and we don't get great production on raspberries but i mostly grow these for the leaves anyways for teas and medical purposes Raspberry leaves are very medicinal. So there's this little section with berries on it. And I'm hoping to add some more. And then we just have the pool in the house. And then this whole area has nothing in it. And that whole area has nothing in it right now. So I'm working to put up some more things over here. I haven't really decided what all I wanna put out here. This is my favorite tree. I'm waiting for fruit. I got some leaves this year. This is a green gauge plum tree, which is extremely hard to find. And I found one a couple of years ago, and so I'm still waiting for fruit. But I'm super excited if this tree does what I hope it does. I'm also still waiting on these two goats to have babies because I feel like it's been a month since I thought they were going to have babies and they're still just holding them in. So I don't know what their problem is. It'll be on a cold day, probably not one of these warm days, but hopefully I'm hoping since this week it's not supposed to be super rainy and it's not supposed to be cold that they'll let them babies out while it's warm. And we don't have to worry about having freezing cold temperatures with babies being born because that's always a problem. I came over to the shade so I could actually see. But that was a little tour, an impromptu because I was not planning on doing that today. But I might as well. I was already walking around and I already had my camera out. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments if you think there are any ideas I could use on that backside to do. Um, we may have children moving out here later on, so I don't want to take up all the space in the world with everything and then having to clear it back off. So we'll see how that goes, but thank you for hanging out with me today.